Welcome to my talk. My name is Margaret Miller reed I'm an Android developer. Currently, I'm a consultant on the Microsoft Research Cognitive Services team. I'm also a organizer and Women Tech Makers Lead for GDG Seattle. So if you're from Seattle, we probably have met before in one of the meetups that I've organized before. So a quick dis disclaimer, my, my talk today uh, does not represent any companies. I'm just here to share with you my personal learnings uh, as an Android developer. And I'm super excited to be here today to talk to you about how to make Android apps with intelligence. So with, when we think of the word intelligence, what comes to your mind? Artificial intelligence, machine learning. So machine learning is everywhere. We hear about it all the time these days. From these personal assistants, Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, Microsoft Cortana, Apple Siri, to self-driving car, to robots, all have machine learning in it. So what is machine learning? Well, we're developers. You know we can write programs and rules, right? But sometimes it's really hard to just write the programming rules. Then this is where machine learning comes in. It's a subset of artificial intelligence and the study of the algorithms. And these algorithms can learn from examples and experience for the data. So a typical process is you collect the training data, then you train a model, and then you use the model to predict. And I have included a, a source here for you to watch the video to get started, but that's the typical process of machine learning. So for the topics that I'm covering today for my talk is mostly the methods and resources available to us as Android developers with very little machine learning knowledge. What are the resources available to us, right? So I will talk about Google Play services, awareness API, and the mobile vision API. And I will talk about machine learning services that just REST API calls that will give you the functionality, um, such as vision, uh, face detection, speech, language, and text from the various companies. So these two areas are the focus of my talk. Then I'm going to briefly mention some resources that are machine learning services that requires machine learning knowledge that, help you, that allow you to build and train your own models before you use them in your apps. I will briefly mention a bit about Amazon Alexa and Peppa the Robot. Then I will wrap up the talk with some design considerations when we make Android apps with intelligence. So Google Play Services. Um, Google Play Services 9.21 was released in June last month. And Awareness API, which was announced at Google I.O., was also released with this new uh, Google Play Services release. So being able to have activity recognition, knowing whether you're running or uh, walking is not new. Having geofencing detecting your location is not new. Being able to uh, find out the weather, you can just use some web service to figure that out too. Those are not new. But what is new with the awareness API is this packs seven signals into one API. So you, using the API, you can detect the user's uh, the time, the location, the nearby places, whether the user is running or walking, biking, etc., and the beacons around you, whether your headphone is on or off, and also the weather and the temperature. And the awareness API actually gives you two capabilities. One is by use, using the snapshot API, you can know the current state of the seven signals or you can define a fence. You know, in the past, if you're familiar with geofencing, you can define one fence, right, with your geolocation. With this new fence API, you can define any of those seven signals. You define the condition, and you can use that condition to trigger 
a uh, push notification or any kind of action that you define in your program. I have included, notice on each slide, I have included a source and some uh, YouTube video or code labs at the bottom of it. So to get started with, with the awareness API, um, all you have to do is to just add the Google Play services to your build.gradle. In this case, it's the context manager service, okay? Then you need to get awareness API from the Google Dev Console. So basically, you get the API key. To get the API key, you do need to have a SHA-1 uh, uh, key first, and as well as your package uh, name. Then you go to the Dev Console, you get the awareness API, then you add the API a key in your manifest, and you're ready to go. Additionally, you might need to add in some permissions in your manifest. For example, if you're wearing, you're, you're working with camera or location, right? So you need to put that permission in there. Um, also, I talked about getting this awareness API key. If you are trying to get information on the places near you as well as the beacons around you, you also need to get two additional, enable the two additional APIs. But you don't need to get one more key. You can use the same key, um, but you just need to enable those two APIs. So I actually going to skip the, the, the demo here for the sample awareness, but I will include the code here for you later. Basically, the sample app will show you that it can detect my current, uh, uh, like my current location, and also like places near me and the beacons near me. So that is the awareness API as part of the Google Play services. Now I'm gonna switch gear and talk about the Google Mobile Vision API. So the Mobile Vision API was released with Google Play services 7.8 last year. So it's not, you know, brand new, brand new. But what is new with this latest 9.2.1 release is there's a lot of enhancements in the feature, as well as that text. Text detection, the text recognizer was recently added last month. It's very easy to get started, and it can detect face, barcode, as well as text. So that's really nice. It's kind of like multi-tracking, right, with three type of detection. So I will talk a little bit about the Face API real quick, just because later on when I talk about other services, we're talking a lot about vision and face. So the Google Play services, this Face mobile uh, vision API for the Face API itself, it detects the face, but it does not do recognition, meaning it will detect that face inside of the image, but it may not recognize this face belongs to person A or person B. And the face can be detected from different angles, um, and then it can detect whether your eyes are open or closed, are you blinking, or whether you're smiling. And it can detect the landmarks on your face. Landmark, by landmarks, I mean where the position of your eyes, your nose, your cheeks. And this is typical as you go investigate other kind of vision or face APIs, you will notice that more or less all the APIs will detect the landmarks on the face. So here's the example. You can find the details from the collab link I gave you. To use the face detector, uh, all you have to do is to add, in this case, the Google Play service is the vision service that you are adding to your build.gradle. Then you create the face detector object. You also need to make sure this detector is actually optional, uh, uh, operational before you start using it. Even though you added the Google Play services in your build.gradle, this, uh, depending on your device, where you are, this detector may or may not be working. So in your code, you need to first to check it is operational first. And then you will uh, detect the face, the detector will detect the face, and then once you get the, you can refer to the code lab for details, but once you get the details, what you will do is for each face, you get a list of faces, for each face, you will just use the face information to draw the rectangle on that image, or along with other additional information, such as whether your eye is open or not. So 
Um, I'm going to do a real quick demo. So this is the face tracker. And it, see, it detected my face. And then you use that face, the information, to draw the bounding box onto the image here. Okay? And then I'm going to do a very quick demo of the, the multi-tracker. As I mentioned, that this, this vision can track not just face, but also a barcode as well as text instead. So I'm just trying to detect that read text thing, right? And <laughs> this is kind of lame, but you can just point this tracker at this anywhere. You, this actually uses a speech to text. So if you press on this thing, you may or may not be able to hear that the speech to text actually will speak. It will speak the text that's detected. All right, so that's the mobile vision uh, API, which can detect a face as well as barcode. I, I will show you later on afterwards, barcode, as well as text. So what I talked about is basically using Google Play services, which is easy. And all of us Android developers know how to use the Google Play services, right? Now I want to look at some of the machine learning services where we can use via the REST API calls. So these machine learning services, they pretty much have pre-trained models. And these companies, they are already into machine learning. They train these models, and then they give these services to us, Android developers, to use. I mean, not so much for free, right? But I'll talk about that. So it's pre-trained models. For us to use these models, we don't need to have any machine learning knowledge. It's just REST API calls. And these are the companies that I know of that will provide these services. The Google Cloud Machine Learning APIs, the Microsoft Cognitive Services, IBM Watson, and the HP Haven On Demand. Now, there are probably other companies that provide these services, but you know these are just the ones I know of. Let's just take a very quick look at these services on the uh, website. So this is the Google's machine learning services. If you just go to the Google Cloud Platform, and if you just click on the products itself, and once you get to the products, you can also scroll down to the machine learning section, right? As you can see, Google has vision, speech, natural language, and then translate, all of these. So let's say if you click on vision API, you can go in there, and then you can say, okay, let me go look at the documentation. And the reason why I'm showing you this is that I showed you how to use the mobile vision API as part of the Google Play services to do all of these cool apps. But before they put it into the Google Play services, if you want to use it, you just have to come here and use, read the documentation and write the code yourself, right? Now, this is the Microsoft Cognitive Services APIs. And it, you can look through. And these are the APIs under vision, speech, language, knowledge, and search, all of these. And, and then if you go say, oh, look at the computer vi vision, and you can try out one of the pictures and then see the result, right? So more or less, these different companies on these pages, you can already try it. For Google's, you can also try it uh, in line, you know, putting some text and analyzing text. And this is IBM uh, Watson. And I'm not going to go to the documentation, but you can, you get the idea, right? And this is HP. All the APIs here where you can do um, graph analy uh, analysis, image analysis, and prediction, etc. Now, and text anal analysis. And you can either use the SDK if they provide for you, or you can write your own code. OK, so now I'm going to get back. Now, those are the four companies I know of that provide these services. How do we get started? 
typically, you know, among these companies, they provide free trial based on a period of time. I think like IBM wants to give you a month free or some other companies might give you X number of transactions for free up per month or maybe per minute. And then a typical process is that you go to their console, then uh, a platform, you sign up for an account, you get an API key, then you include the key in the Android app, and then you download the SDK or include the dependency in the build.gradle uh, file, if there's SDK available. If not, then you just make the REST API calls. You have the right code yourself to handle the REST API calls. For the REST API calls, um, how many of you are experienced Android developers? Okay, most of you are. Okay, so you're familiar with the REST API call using Android apps, right? Here's your device, and you need to make a call. In this case, using these machine learning APIs, typically, we put an image, uh, we send the image stream audio or video or text as a stream via the HTTP call to some cloud REST API endpoint, whether it's vision or speech or language or text, etc. And then you get back a response which you can use in your Android app. So one example might be, okay, I'm sending the image with a face in there and I will send it over to an a a vision API. The result comes back, will give me the four corner of my face detected. You use that four corners to draw a bounding box on the image, and the result comes back, might have some emotion, like, oh, I'm happy, or I'm sad, or um, the gender and the age. All of those response will come back, and then you can put it in your Android app, and then the typical challenges I will say that you need to consider is also make, when you make that call, you know, doing things asynchronously if you need to make multi different calls using different APIs, right? Unlike the Google Play services, for example, the vision API gives you the detector, you can use the face detector or text re recognizer or the uh, barcode scanner. In this case, you're just writing your own um, REST API call, so you have to handle those yourself. So I'm gonna, for this REST API call, I'm gonna use Microsoft's Vision API as an example. Uh, I listed it over here, but there's more what it can detect. It, it can detect the gender, the age, and the emotion, and it can detect your face as well as recognizing the face, if that face belonged to a particular person, yes or no. So um, let's look at an example of demo of an app. So um, this, in this app, we're gonna add an image. So in this case, I'm gonna just pick an image that I already have. So I'm selecting an image again, and let's see if it'll work. Now it worked. So it says it's a close-up of the remote control, and then you see a confidence of about 80%, okay? So what I just show you is the Vision API. Basically, you can either take a picture or use an existing image. It will detect and actually describe to you what that image is. And then another one is the Mimicker Alarm. I'm not gonna do a demo here, but I'm just telling you that it actually has the computer vision, emotion, and speech. Actually, three different machine learning API baked into that. You can look later on. Um, given the time, I'm not gonna go into the details. So this is another one, is the, the Microsoft Language Understanding Intelligence Service. What's interesting about this one is, it's not so much of those ready-made, like you just go to an endpoint for vision or face and use. You actually have to go use the model and train a little bit. It's a pre-trained model, and, but you do need to go in define the intent, et cetera, and then you're typing the sentence like five times. For example, some sentences you might type, type in might be uh, what time is it, or set an alarm for six o'clock, or book a flight to Paris, et cetera, so that it understands. You build that model that understands your language, and then you actually create uh, 
deploy the model to an endpoint, you get an endpoint back that you can use, just like before. You can use it in your app to do the HTTP call. So now I'm going to mo move on. What I just talked about, even though the example I gave was the Microsoft Division API, but understand you can use the Google, IBM, and HP, all of the machine learning services to do the same thing, uh, similar things. Now I'm going to move on to talking about the machine learning services where you can build your own machine learning models and train them. So for this, you do need to have machine learning knowledge. Uh, like the previous two example, Google Play Services, REST API call, you just, as long as you're an Android developer, you're good. For this one, uh, you do need to have the knowledge. Now one of them is the Google Cloud Machine Learning Platform. I have the link here, you can look at them later. Basically, the platform will allow you to build the models and also train the models. And same thing for the Amazon machine learning service, where you go, it has these templates for you, hold your hand, try to help you to go uh, build a model and then train the model, put in the training data, et cetera, um, then you can use for your app. I want to quickly mention about the Google TensorFlow, because I am sure at at the end, when I, it's Q&A time, someone's going to say, oh, what about TensorFlow? So I just want to quickly mention about here. Like I said, um, I'm an Android developer. I'm not super familiar with TensorFlow, but I know it's an open source machine learning library. And it has this link, uh, neural network playground, where you can go visually actually play with the neural network. So give it a try and try it out. Uh, one interesting thing is the Android sample app with TensorFlow. And so the sample app is actually on GitHub. Google put it there. One interesting thing about this is that, um, anyway, I'm going to just try a demo real quick. You can see my screen, right? You can see on there, it says microphone. Microphone, sometimes it says a screener, but sometimes it's a microphone. And then <laughs> I do this. Uh, up here, wait, monitor, and it's, I, it thinks it's a restroom, but anyway, because a lot of people, <laughs> sorry, uh, let's, let's try, screen, it, it detected this is screen, right? But, and anyway, I, it, I tried it on other things, it actually pretty, worked pretty well, but as you can see, sometimes it doesn't quite work, but one interesting thing about this particular app um, the Android sample app with TensorFlow is that you do not need a network connection. You, you saw how embarrassing it was earlier when I was trying to show you the, the Vision API one that with a remote control on it, but I had no network connection. I had to go fumble around, connect, and uh, same thing with the Google Play services. That one, I suspect it might need uh, network connection as well. But, for this one, the TensorFlow one, you don't need the network connection because that trained the model, that machine learning, that intelligence is actually part of your app on your phone. So that, that's the interesting thing, the interesting part I want to point out. So I talked about the machine learning services that uh, just REST API call, and then I talked about machine learning services where you can go build your own model, train your own models. Now, beyond these services, there are two things I want to point out. Um, one is um, Amazon Alexa. How many of you have uh, Amazon Alexa? Okay, a couple of you. So, you know, I, I actually built the Alexa with the Raspberry Pi, and the setup is too complicated, the setup here, right? So, but basically what it is is just the Raspberry Pi, and I have to put in a speaker, but the, the Alexa itself, that just a speaker, but behind that speaker, there's a lot of the machine learning, in particular, also the speech recognition and speech there. Since we're talking about machine learning services, I just want to point that out. The interesting thing is that you can train Alexa by building new skills. And I have included um, links here for you to try it out. For example, you can train uh, Alexa to play a game or have a flashcard or to do some other things, which is very interesting where, because in that sense, the voice becomes the interface, right? Because today with the phone, the interface is your finger is touching. Uh, I think earlier Kelly was 
giving a talk about uh, on the keynote, and she mentioned about how the query, the Google query, like 20% is actually voice search. So as you can see, voice as an interface is very important, right? So try, try this out. So growing up in China, I grew up watching Astro Boy. How many of you heard of Astro Boy? All of you, almost. Anyway, I grew up watching Astro Boy, and I love robots. And I've never dreamed that in my lifetime, I will get to program robots. But at, now we can. As Android developers, we can program robots now. At Google I.O., there was a session talking about Pepper uh, the Robot. So Pepper the Robot is a humanoid uh, robot. It can move around, and it can detect emotion. Um, it can speak and carry on a conversation with you. So what's interesting about this is, you know, I talked about REST API call and do the machine learning training, et cetera. And with this, you can, you know, aside from writing Android apps, you can actually program robots. So how do we get started programming robots? It's really easy. I, I won't go to demo and go to the Android studio right now, but you can try it out yourself later on. Basically, uh, in Android Studio, where you go, download plugins, you know, you go to settings, mm, plugin, and you browse, and then you just search for the plugin. You download that plugin, and then once that's downloaded, you have some additional icons um, on the top of your Android Studio where you can launch a, um, well, you can download the SDK, and you can also launch the emulator for the robot. Why is the Pepper has a, um, a tablet on his chest. And so the emulator, you can have the emulator of the, the tablet that's on Pepper's chest, as well as a robot viewer, where you can see some of gestures of the robot. And then you just create a regular Android project. You enable the robot project structure, and then you're off, ready to go program robots. So um, I went over my, uh, all, all of these uh, resources that's available to us to make intelligent apps, right? And I kind of went through really fast. In closing, when I, uh, before I close, I want to talk about some of the design considerations. Um, all of these machine learning intelligence, you know, uh, Awareness API, all of this is really cool. But you should not include these in your app because it's cool. You should only include the intelligence in your app because your app's the use scenarios uh, actually calls for that intelligence, right? Once you decide on that, you do need that intelligence, you do need to put in the face detection or the speech to text, text to speech, et cetera, those intelligence in there, then when choosing an API or service, you should consider the ease of use, you know, how much code do you have to write. If you're using Google Play services, you don't have to write that much code. If you're doing the REST API call, if that company is providing an SDK for you, you also don't need to write that much code. Um, but if you have to just write the code your own to do the REST API call, you have a lot more to consider. Um, and then, you know, for example, the awareness API packs seven signals together. It really helps to op opt optimize like the battery usage. You can imagine you're putting all these services in your app. It can just drain your battery, right? When you put in these uh, services, as you notice that a lot of it will use the camera like the images, it will take a picture or take a video or perhaps to detect the location. So you need to handle the permissions properly, um, especially, you know, the marshmallow runtime permissions. You need to check if you have that permission for camera or perhaps location before you actually start to use that service. So one of the things I didn't show you earlier, you know, I was zipping through like really, really fast, uh, was that like one of the emotion APIs can actually, you know, take a picture of my face, it can detect my 
emotion, and then vision and face API can you know, take a picture of my face, it can detect my age, my gender, um, you know, my emotion, and with the awareness API, you know whether I'm walking or running, you know my location, you know what's near me. So this is a, a lot of data that you can gather about a user, right? So what comes to my mind is privacy, right? Can you imagine you take a picture of my face you already know so much about me, right? And then you can put in something in the app and then you can detect whatever I'm doing. So you should be, you should inform your user about data privacy, um, as well as be mindful with the, the user's data. For example, if you're taking the, a picture of my face and you're sending it to some company and that company might be just keeping the picture of me, right? So you need to be upfront with um, the user about what you're doing with the data as well as the privacy. So what is next? Well, I think, I think the future is already here. You should go build an app with intelligence, make, you, make your own Echo, go program a robot, and study some machine learning. Um, even though most of the resource I shared with you does not require machine learning knowledge, I would say starting last year or this year now, you're going to see a trend that for app developers, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an Android developer, iOS developer, web developer, front end, back end, it doesn't matter what kind of developer you are, you should probably go and learn a bit about how machine learning works. That's not to say we'll become data scientists, but it will help you to have a better working relationship to work with a data scientist and also help you to build better apps as you use these machine learning services. I have included in the appendix some resources for you to get started with machine learning. So thank you so much everyone for being here uh, for my talk. Please remember to fill out the session feedback and keep in touch.